Paying cash for your next car? Great news. You're a cash buyer, but there's something very important that you need to know. Let's visualize this. You're kind of thinking you're going to walk in the front door and flash that cash because everyone loves cash and the dealership will be so impressed that you'll get an amazing car deal, right? No, 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 and no. Wrong. <laughs> Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, and here's the video many of you have been asking for. Today, you're going to find out why you should never tell a dealership, I'm paying cash the moment you walk in the front door. Before we get started, I want to be clear that there are both good and bad people in the car business. Some are on you like a dog, will treat you like you're a piece of meat, and they think you don't belong there unless you're ready to buy a car today. The other type of salesman will respect you and give you a chance to make a proper decision on what is the second biggest buying decision. Which car salesman do you hope to find on a car lot? All right, let's talk about cash. Don't walk in the front door of a dealership and say you're paying cash. Chances are you'll run into the wrong kind of salesman and you'll get burned. That said, I want to be clear that I'm not suggesting at all that you should lie. You're going to pay for the car in the end, right? That's all that should really matter to the dealership in the grand scheme of things, that you pay for the car. So what I'm saying is that you shouldn't mention how you plan to pay for the car the moment you walk in the door. And don't start babbling about cash at any point during the negotiations. Don't play those cards until you're in finance. Before I explain what changed in the business model that made dealerships dislike cash, a little housekeeping. If you're new to the channel, you want to subscribe, hit that notification bell. You'll love what you can learn here to make car shopping easier for you and your family and friends, and you can save thousands of dollars to boot. Okay, what's true today is that if you walk into a dealership and say, I'm paying cash, you can actually expect to pay a higher price for your vehicle than any other car buyer who plans to finance. Almost doesn't make sense. You thought cash is king, right? Well, not anymore. And while it seems counterintuitive that talking about cash too early in the process could hurt you, it's true. Dealers dislike cash buyers because of changes with their business model. And some dealers are getting downright ridiculous with how far they go to penalize a cash buyer. Let me share with you a recent comment on this channel from Shang. He writes, Hey Kevin, I've been shopping around and considering purchasing a truck, cash. There have been a few places that state that they charge a $700 fee for paying cash and not financing. I've been able to talk most of these dealers out of the other fees they try to charge, but they really seem to be firm on this bank fee for paying cash and not financing. Thanks in advance. Who would have thought this would happen? Certainly nobody from the cash is king crowd charging a $700 bank fee for using cash. Oh yeah, but the reason isn't what you might think it is. Years ago, before the menu boards, the product selections, and a variety of charged fees, cash was king on a car lot, but not true today. Full disclosure, I'm a cash buyer, just like some of you. But unlike most of you, I've worked inside the walls of a dealership and because I understand their business model, I will never tell a dealership I'm paying cash until I have my car deal in writing and I'm sitting in the finance office. And then there's even the correct moment when you're there. I'll share that here in just a moment. But if in the car negotiation process they ask me about filling out finance apps or monthly payments, I just say, I'll see what your finance man has to offer after we finalize the price negotiations. If they persist, I say, listen, I don't talk finances outside of a private confidential room with someone who doesn't have the authority to sign out the car. No offense, Mr. Salesman, but since that is not part of your job, I'm not doing that out here. I never lie to them, and I suggest you don't either. I just firmly tell them I'm not talking about it until the price negotiations are over. That usually kills it. Now, if cash is no longer king, what changed all of that? Pretty simple. As I mentioned, it is the business model. The internet changed all kinds of things for dealerships, but the primary one was how they make money. For many years now, everyone has had access to all the information you ever wanted concerning car price. Most of you knew exactly what your chosen vehicle was worth because of the level of pricing information out on the web. It's just astounding. If you ever find yourself at a dealership and you have no idea what the fair market price is for the vehicle you're shopping for, well, it's only because you didn't even try to look. Shame on you. With dealerships beating each other up with online car pricing, something had to give and it did. They developed other ways of taking money away from unsuspecting customers, ways they don't advertise and things you likely don't know much about, although 
you might have a clue. Bottom line, when the business model changed, a typical car dealership no longer makes the majority of their profits off the sale price of the car. Let me say it again. The sale price, the place you put all of your attention on, is no longer the money maker at a dealership. When you realize they're making most of their money elsewhere, not on car price, you start to understand why they are so willing to bargain right down to basement car prices. They are counting on the subsequent steps inside the dealership to empty your pockets. These steps all come after price negotiations are over. Now, if you utter that scary word cash too early, and yes, I did say scary word, that entirely shuts down any further conversation about car price and for a really simple reason. They aren't likely to take advantage of a cash buyer in finance, and they know it. So they stand firm on the price of the car, hoping to get everything they can out of you right then and there. Think about it. When the finance office is writing up a car loan for you, you'll notice the main question they ask is, what is your payment goal? And why do you think they ask this question? It's not for the purpose of doing the best job to help you afford the vehicle you're trying to buy. They ask the question because they want you to think less about total cost and more about a single number, a monthly payment. As soon as this change in focus is accomplished, they can pack all those juicy profit generating fees and products into your car loan. What might have been a 48 month loan suddenly becomes 60 months, 64, 72, or 84 months. You'll hear, good news, I got you approved and you're right at 525 a month, just a few dollars away from your monthly payment goal. You might think it's a little high, but you're amazed and happy, but you don't realize the guy just screwed you over. He's going to make another $3,500 off you and he has your loan term spread out over such a long time period, your grandkids are going to be graduating college by the time you pay this bugger off. <laughs> to do all of this, they need a car loan to bury the truth. Cash buyers destroy all that opportunity. With a car loan, they take thousands of dollars from you after you negotiated the sale. You get that? A car loan lets them rip you off. No car loan, the deception strategy and finance is out the window. Aha, now you're seeing the light. Without a car loan to write, they can't bury costs, they can't hide profits, and they sure as heck aren't going to get you, that savvy cash buyer, to pull more money out of your pockets. You have hard-earned cash in your pocket for a reason. You're smart with your money, and financially smart people are not easily buffaloed by a slick-talking finance officer. Making money in a dealership is nothing more than a process that starts somewhere, the sale of the car, makes additional steps, like the accessories department, and ends somewhere else, like the finance office. Some steps add a lot more profit than others. The reason cash is not king in a dealership is because profits are king. And they make a majority of their profits in finance, not off of cash buyers. Cash is a bad thing because it interferes with profits. The reason people get stuck at dealerships for hours these days is because the majority of the money is being made after price negotiations. The longer you're there, the more money they are making. They make a little money on the sale price, make good money on the trade-in, and make fantastic money on the financing. And most of that fantastic money is coming from products and fees in finance. Now you should understand. You don't mention cash until you're in finance. At this point, you're done with the negotiating at a sales level, but you're not even close to being done in finance. It's important how you proceed from here, and I promised I'd tell you how I do it. I sit down in finance and ask the finance officer to please add any appropriate tax title and license to the sale price of the car so I know what the total is. If he tries to shift the conversation to financing, I'll just put him back on track by saying, before any of that, I need to know the total. What will I be paying? And then we can discuss the payment options. They don't like that. They want to get into menu discussions, presenting products, and talking about protecting my investment. As if a rapidly depreciating piece of metal, the car, is an investment. Ask any accountant. It's an expense item, not an investment. When you're looking at expenses, why would you want to increase your expense? Some finance officers realize that only a very knowledgeable person makes statements like this, and they cut to the chase. However, there are several clueless ones. They proceed trying line after line to move the conversation towards products. Notice, I still haven't mentioned I'm paying cash. You have to stay in control. I let the finance officer present the deal. I look it over. I use the state website to calculate tax title and license, and I check to see if he got it right. Then, maybe I see a document fee for 599 bucks, 
and I'm only willing to pay $75. I draw a line through it. If it's the only problem, I look up and say, change that to 75 bucks and we have a deal. If he says he has to charge every customer the same because of a lame state law, well, I just go out and get a hold of my salesman and I say, you know, I've reduced my offer by $524 because of a ridiculously high $599 doc fee in finance. I'm only paying him 75 bucks. Well, 70% of the time it goes exactly like that. Sometimes the dealer will refuse and then I'm out the door. You have to be willing to walk when you're dealing with crooked people. Never give the crooks your business. That's how we force bad dealers out of the business. All of us refusing to do business with shady dealers. Now let's say there's a $500 window edge theft program also on the paperwork. Again, I cross it off. I line out everything I'm not willing to pay for and give it back to the finance officer saying, get rid of that and we have a car deal. Notice I still haven't said anything about cash. I'm not lying to them, but I'm letting them believe they might get me somehow, some way. Every good card player understands this. It's not lying, it's not cheating, it's just plain old smart. When all is done, I confirm the bottom line. This is essentially the out the door price, right? He nods. I say, well, based on X credit score and plenty of income to support that, what are your current rates on a 36 month loan? He doesn't like this because only smart car buyers get 36 month loans if they finance at all. He's not in control and he starts to figure that out. He gives me an approximate rate, lays out the term and then asks, so what were you gonna do for a down payment? I say, figure it out with half down. Here's the thing. I said I'm a cash buyer, but I will still occasionally take out a short-term loan just to keep my credit file current. This is just smart in the event I ever decide to use credit for something. If the deal looks good that he presents, I'll say, well, write it up. If it doesn't, I already confirmed that this is the out the door price. I write him the check and say, if you want a few days for the check to clear the bank, I'll come back next week and pick up the car. Otherwise, you can call my bank right now and confirm the available balance. Don't bring actual cash with you. Interestingly, that's what drug dealers do and other people trafficking in illegal activity. They use cars to launder money. The moment you pull out a big wad of cash, it opens up a whole new world. When a dealership receives cash exceeding $10,000, Form 8300 must be filed. The deal may in fact be an attempt to launder illegal funds. If 10,000 or less was received by the dealer and the deal gets canceled, the dealer may voluntarily file Form 8300 anyhow if the transaction appears suspicious. Bottom line, you might be opening up an investigation on yourself. No sense creating problems you don't need. Now, let's recap. For the person who walks in the door and blurts out, I'm Mr. Big Stuff here, I'm paying cash, give me a deal. Well, you got a good deal, all right. Like it or not, you paid a much higher price for your vehicle because you just notified them up front that they have no end game with you. No way to hide these profit packing goodies at the end. Without the end game to play, they nailed you to the wall right there and suddenly they didn't want to budge an inch more on car price. They had to take everything they can from you before you went a step further because you just destroyed the biggest money making opportunity they have. That's the finance office. Make sense? Never say you're paying cash up front. Never. This is the kind of straight talk you can expect on this channel, so I encourage you to subscribe and stay up to date. The information you walk away with could save you thousands of dollars on your next car purchase, and you'll know right where to come back for a refresher the next time you decide to head out and go do some car shopping. Maybe you still have questions. If so, put them in the comment section below. I try to answer as many as I can. If you want to thank me for this service, simple enough, hit the like button. Or maybe you want to share it on social media with a family and friends. That's always much appreciated. And finally, some of you have asked this question. How do I tip this guy for all his help? Well, I'm not expecting you to pay me for what I do. But if you do wish to send me a tip, I'll put a link in the description box down below. Just don't go trying to hurt yourself financially. A dollar or two is great. Says thank you like anything else. For all those car dealership followers, the owners, employees, finance officers, I want to thank those of you who come here regularly to validate what I've shared with my viewers. Your comments are priceless, and I've even made videos from your feedback. I also want to say to those of you who complain, especially the people who say, oh, just another guy who didn't make it in the car business, or hey, you're giving us a bad reputation. Look up the Gallup poll done each year on most and least trusted professions. 
A car salesman tied for dead last with a telemarketer and a congressman. I didn't make that reputation for you. You earned it yourself. Too many crooked dealer owners earned it for the entire industry. I'm just helping to flush them out. I challenge you to go out and help me fix it. To the rest of my viewers, thank you for joining me here today and thank you for all the kind and supportive comments that always show up in my videos. I wish you all the very best car deal you ever thought possible. Remember, don't mention cash up front. And now you know why. Still got a question? Well, just put it down below. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care.